Praise the Lord. I am Sister Jeanette Sanders, and I will be your Sunday school teacher for today. Today is April the 5th, 2020. I pray you all are doing well and that you are praying for our for the people in America, for the people in other countries. And I hope that you are praying that God will heal our land. You know why? Because God hears the prayers of his little children and you are so special in his sight. Brother Cannon and Sister Willis, Sister Ware, Sister Weathers and Sister Jackson and Sister Breon Kelly and myself, Sister Jeanette Sanders, we miss you all so much and we cannot wait until we see you again. So let's dive into our Sunday school lesson. But first, we're going to say a word of prayer. Lord God in heaven, we come before you thanking you today, God. We thank you for the, our health and our strength. God, we thank you for the activities of our lamb. God, we thank you for making provision. God, where we're able to sleep in our beds. God, we thank you for giving us food, oh God, and that we are able to put on our tables and partake with our family members. God, we thank you for your love, God. We thank you most of all, God, because you died on a cross for our sins, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you because, Lord, we know, God, that nothing is too hard that you cannot handle. There is no problem that you cannot solve. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you open up our ears, open up our hearts, that as we dive into our Sunday school lesson, God, that we may learn from your word, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for everyone in their respectful places. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name, amen. I love you again. Welcome. Today is Sunday, and you, are, you all are not forgotten. Um, we want you to be a part of our Sunday school, our Christian education. It does not stop because God has made provisions where we're able to go on Zoom and we're able to record that you all may be fed as well, that you all will also be connected to your Sunday school um, classes every Sunday, if God's willing. So, well, today we are going to learn about justice and doing what is right. And of course, I know that you know what to do, uh, do right. And I also have great confidence in you that you all are doing what you're told to do. And that's obedience. And when you're obedient, you're doing the right thing. You are following God's laws. And so you might be asking, Sister Sanders, what is justice? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Justice is being fair, treating people right, not treating one person one way and treating another person another way, but you, we are treating everybody like we want to be treated. And so we want you to know that that you may not feel like justice is going on in your life right now. You may be feeling that, Lord, why am I stuck in this house? I can't go to school. I can't go to church. I can't go outside and play. And I just don't feel like this is right. And you know what? Those feelings are okay. But I just want you to know you're not alone. Those, the, there are other children in other uh, countries and other states, they are going through the same identical thing as you are. So you know what? That's justice. You know, we're all being treated the same. But you know what? God, he is also being justice because he's keeping us safe. He's keeping us in the palm of his hand and he's praying for you. Yes, God is praying for you. That scripture. All right. So right now, what I want to do is kind to kind of go into our Sunday school lesson because I only have a, a, a short amount of time to share. So we're going to read our uh, primary application story. You probably can't see that clearly, but hopefully we'll get it uploaded where you can read your stories like we do in our Sunday school classes. So I'm going to begin the reading. So what I want you to do is put on your good, <clears throat> excuse me, listening ears and be able to tell me what is going on in this story, okay? <clears throat> excuse me. And here, the, I'm going to begin the, the story, and it reads, Are you selling lemonade, Kim? Abra asked his friend. 
He looked at the pitcher of lemonade on the table in front of her. Yep, said Kim, 10 cents a cup. Yes, 10 cents, uh, it only costs a dime, right? 10 cents is a dime. All right, Ever gave Kim a dime. She gave him a cup of lemonade. Ever drank it and smiled. Yum, he said, he ran home. Ever had something in his mind what he wanted to do. Let's listen up. Soon, Ever returned with a plate of cookies. I'm going to sell these old cookies for one dollar each. Hmm. Ever said, sitting down next to Kim, let's stop right there. Ever went and got a plate of cookies, but these cookies were old cookies. So I'm just trying to figure out why would you go get some old cookies to sell? Hmm. That doesn't sound like you're going to be fair or just, or you're going to, you know, even want someone to, you know, get sick. I, I can't understand that. Why would you sell old cookies? But let's listen up and learn some more. Ever said, sitting down next to Kim, the mail carrier stopped. May I buy some snacks? Hmm. So Kim is selling her lemonade for how much? You're listening. You're right. For 10 cents. And Albert, he's selling some old cookies for how much? Exactly, one dollar. Would you buy some old cookies for one dollar? Does that seem like that's a justly thing to do? Of course not. Who would do that? So that's really, you know what? That's like greed. They're just not, he's not, Albert is not putting on the, the characteristics of a Christian. But Kim says, okay, it's only 10 cents. She could have sold it for 25 cents, but she's selling it for 10 cents. So my thing is, let's listen up. Let's ask this question. Here comes a mail carrier who has been probably carrying mail all day long, and he's probably hungry. So he's looking for some snacks because he was like, wow, I see some lemonade and some cookies. So you know what? I think I'm just going to purchase something from them. So but when he goes over and he gets the lemonade, which is delicious because Albert said it was delicious, but then he takes the cookie and he, he, I'm sure he's probably looking at the cookie like, this cookie doesn't look fresh. And how much you want for this cookie, Albert? And he says a dollar. And I'm sure that mail carrier is probably thinking, oh, you're trying to cheat me. So that's not being justly. Wow. So remember, whatever you do, Always remember you have to do the right thing because God always looks at us for what we do and how we treat people. Was ever treating that mailman justly? I would say not. But for Kim, I would think so. All right, let's look in, in the um in the inside and we're gonna read, <clears throat> excuse me, our Sunday school lesson. And it's saying doing what is just. Okay, first of all, I want to read the scripture. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Okay, this is coming from Isaiah 42 and 1. So my thing is, God is sending someone to judge the Gentiles justly yes we are considered gentiles we were not we're not jews we are of the gentile nation and these were the other people outside of the jews but because we serve a loving god he included us he included us he does not forget about us he serves us he ser he comes to us as a servant and we come to him as a servant as well, because that's what we want to do. We want to serve God and we want to do it justly. Let's look at the lesson. It says doing what is just and I'll read in your hearing. This reading is coming from Mark 11, the 11th chapter. So in your spare time, go to Mark 11 and you can read it in any version you would like so that you can better understand 
what the story is about. All right, here goes my reading. Jesus was walking with his disciples. He said, go ahead, you will find a donkey and colt. Bring them here. So how do you think that Jesus knew that a donkey was going to be at the gate? You know why? Because Jesus is all knowing. There's nothing that goes uh, uh, from him or th th there's nothing that goes on that he does not know. He's an all knowing God. He knows everything. He knows what we're praying in our secret places when we're laying in our bed and we're thinking, Lord, you know, when is this going to end? Lord, I'm sad. I'm hungry. Whatever you're going through, Jesus knows. He knows everything. But let's get back to the lesson. Okay. It says, they did. So the disciples went and did exactly what the, uh, our Savior said do. And he, they found exactly what Jesus said that they were going to find. Let's continue reading. They laid coats on the coat, coat's back, which is a donkey. People spread out cloaks and palm branches. So what's going on right here is that the disciples took off their cloak, maybe like a jacket or something, and they laid it on the donkey because they didn't want our Savior to sit on the donkey, you know, we'll just say, you know, without any kind of cushion. So they cushioned it with their cloaks because they loved him. And they knew that he was worthy to sit on something that was soft, just rather than just sitting on the donkey. And then... The people, after the disciples told them, that's why I say you have to read the whole story. That's why the disciples told the people that someone was coming and they told them who was coming. So they was in great anticipation. So you know what they did? They went and started taking their cloaks off of them and they laid them on the ground because they knew somebody important was coming to the city to the temple and all not only that they were cutting branches away from the trees and they were like palms and they were just laying them down as far as our savior would ride into the city so my thing is they knew somebody important was coming let's find out who was coming all right Jesus rode into the city like royalty. Aha! Uh -huh. So Jesus was coming to the city. And you know what? They said city like royalty. He, it wasn't like royalty. He is royalty. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's just like, you know, the people over in Britain, the king and the queen over in England. You know what? Jesus, they, we consider them as royalty. But Jesus is even greater than they are because he took the sins upon the world. So he is royalty. He reigns in royalty because he is our king of kings and our lords of lords. Let's continue reading. It says, Jesus went to the temple. Lying merchants. And the word lying, L-Y-I-N-G, is someone that's not speaking the truth. Someone that is telling something that's not right. And they were doing something wrong. Let's continue reading. Merchants were everywhere. Overcharging for animals to sacrifice. Let's look at the word overcharging. Overcharging is when you charge someone unfairly, unjustly. Okay? That means that, like Amber did, he was overcharging. It was an old cookie, and he was selling the cookie, one cookie, for one dollar. So, you know, he was overcharging. There's no way he should have been selling an old cookie, old cookie, for one dollar. <throat> and so these merchants were in, the, in God's temple, God's holy place, selling, and they were lying. So I can only imagine what's going to come up in the next few sentences. Let's read. My temple is a place of prayer, not a den of thieves, <gasps> yelled Jesus. So Jesus was angry 
How dare you come into my temple? How dare you lie in the house of God? How dare you overcharge people when you know that that's the wrong price? Jesus was so angry and he said, you know what? I got something for you. Let's read. He made the merchants leave. So you know what? They couldn't even stay. He said, you got to get out of my temple. How dare you do this in the house of God? You have to leave. And they had to leave. They left. Then the blind and disabled came. So now our Savior is inviting the people that's crippled, that's blind. He said, you know what? Come, come. I have something so great for you. He healed them. So God had a healing for them. He was so sick of those other people doing all kinds of things in his temple. You're unjustly. You don't tell the people the right thing. You don't treat the people right. He says, and I can't stand you. Get out of my sight. But what the story does not share with you, that's why I say you have to go to Mark 11 and read that. Jesus began to turn over the tables. He was so angry at them for what they were doing in his temple. And he just threw the tables over it. I'm sure he probably was kicking stuff out of the way because he said, you all are so unjust. You're not fair. You're not right. you just sinners. He said, just like, get out the way. So you know what? That's what God desires of us. Always do the right thing. Always treat people the right way. Let me continue on because I only have a few more minutes, okay? It says, after Jesus healed them, he said, little children. You know what? It was little children there. And they began to sing praises to God. It says, little children sang his praises. And that's what God wants you to do today. When we come get off this video, just put on something in your house and just go around and just begin to worship God and just sing the praises of God because God has never left you. You may feel like, God, I don't feel you. I don't see you working, but I want you to know God sees you. Just sing and give God the glory and the praise because that's all God wants is for you to praise him. And we are going to come out of this dilemma. You will be able to leave your home one day. So don't feel like God has left, have left you. He hasn't. He loves you. And so do we. And let me finish up, okay? The priests were bothered. So the other people was looking at what was happening. So the priest was sitting back and was like, oh, who is this man? Who, who does he think he is? But all the time, I'm sure they had it back in their mind. They knew who he was, but they probably didn't want to acknowledge that he was Jesus, our Savior. But it's okay. It doesn't matter. Let's continue reading and finish up. People thought Jesus was the Messiah. Aha. Uh -huh. So they thought he was the Messiah. You know what? They were thinking right. He was the Messiah. What is the Messiah, Sister Jeanette? Well, <clears throat> the Messiah is Jesus. He came to this world to make sure that we would have a way to heaven. He made sure that he had to fulfill his father's commandment and his promise. And it was coming through him. He was going to save the people from their sins. You know what? He fulfilled it. Because today, I'm saved because of our great Messiah. He is our soon coming King. He is coming back together. All right. So with this being said, I only had a few minutes to share, but I would like for you to know that we love you. I miss you. I hope you enjoyed this little short presentation of your Sunday school and Prayerfully, we want uh, to upload the, um, your life application because we have some, um, oh, oh, the video is messing up, but we have some activities for you to do. So prayerfully, we'll get this uploaded for you to do your activities so you can share with your mom, your dad, your siblings, so you all can sit around and talk about the activities and what you learned. Please let your mom and your dad know what you learned because you know what? The last Sunday we worked together, you guys were 
awesome. You were listening with your good listening skills and you were able to share what you had learned. And that's what I want you to do today. Justly, remember the word justly. Remember that it's doing the right thing. It's also that when you do something wrong, when people think you're doing something wrong and they accuse you wrongly, always know that God got your back. God will always come in and he will share with them that that wasn't right. You're, fa you're, you're accusing them falsely and that's called a just judge. He always, he always share with us that he is the righteous judge. He's the just judge. So signing off, and I want you to know that Bishop and Sister Smith, they're praying for you. They miss you. They love you so much. And remember, I love you too. Be blessed.